As we journey through life, we all encounter ebbs and flows, many highs and lows. We often come across stumbling blocks that leave us feeling quite disheartened or unsure about how to move back to the realm of possibility and positivity. No matter what we undergo, we all can embrace the journey, tap into the tools to push through and overcome, and find the beauty in the ashes. This is Odyssey with Yendi, Beauty in the Ashes. Miss Joan, Miss Vivacious and Spunky and full of life and energy. I mean, I've been in your company for what now? 10 minutes? Yeah. I'm a canter, so you're full of excitement. <laughs> <laughs> ah, tell me what your experience was leading up to making Miss Joan this spunky and vivacious lady. How come you're so full of energy? That's God gift, you know? Yeah. Because sometimes when things things up you don't even realize yeah but i think that's just god's gift and i just look at life differently mm. you know people see things i see it different yeah because they look around you nature mm. yeah mankind have the wisdom but god give us that knowledge so oh. you know yeah yes Ms. yeah Joel. let's let us know that no care what is it that you may go into because i always use plants yeah you know you nurture it so it grows till it come to perfection yes. same thing goes with life Yes. You have to nurture you in order to come to perfection. So, in ways that you make a mistake or do something that is not wrong, look into yourself and correct what you do and move on again. Move on again. Because you always have chances and you have choice. So, you choose. I feel like we can end right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are a mom. Yeah. You are a mom of seven wonderful children. Yes, I am. I feel like. Actually, I feel like I need to call your mommy <laughs> instead of auntie or auntie instead of miss yeah. because you have lived a full life. Tell me what motherhood was like for you. Motherhood. I started very early. I have my first child when I was 15. Yeah. You know, didn't know what, I didn't know that you have to have sex to have kids. Really? Because, you know, growing up, your mother never wants to tell you what it is like because right. you don't want to put in that. Right. right. So they always tell me that baby dropped from sky. Really? Yeah, because I was thinking I didn't know you have to have sex to have babies. Mm. But anyway, got the first one. I don't know, still up with the second, and then up with the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, and the seventh. Mm -hmm. So it's four girls, three boys. Yeah. Ages, but, but my last child, the second to last one, they're six years apart, but the first set was two years. One Between was, each of them? Yeah. Oh, wow. But one was one year after, because I missed the family planning plan. I got ah. pregnant on that one. But... Although I start early, I don't regret having any of my kids. Yeah, tell me. And I give God thanks that I have them because they are still there with me. Yeah. You know, and it's nice, you know, in everything you have ups, downs. Yes. But do not let your downs keep you down. Oh, yes, you know, Mr. You use it as a motivator for say, all right, this was in my way and I stumbled over it. Do I remove it and find a different way or do I just keep on stumbling? Yeah. So it's up to you. Yeah. You know, oh, you really want to um, view your life. And I always said I want a nice house, a car. I can't drive in it, but still going to learn on that part. <laughs> Somebody and can I, drive, you know, the car. Yeah, exactly. Can I get the chauffeur driven? And that's more relaxing. All then. right. See it there. <laughs> so I always want to have a big home. Not that big, but I just like, just like your little settings here. This is me. Yes. I love nature. Yes, me too. That's very beautiful. Mm. Anyway, is when you're born, Miss Joan? I was born the 12th of November. See, then all. So I'm a Scorpio. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I love nature. Yeah. You know, I just see plants as, as life. Yes. Because every plant has different season yes. for it to bloom. It can remain green and it does look dumb, but the green can be bright. Yes. You know, it's just like when the rain falls in the river, you don't see the beauty of it, but you see it when it falls on the leaves because it's always shining. So I always love that nature itself. Nature is beautiful. Yes, it's true. It is. Um, when did you meet and marry your husband? Well, I met my husband when I have my sixth child. Yeah. You know, young, vibrant, because you're still young, you know. You might yeah. open a year, but you still have that see youth the no. in a year. See the no. So we <laughs> met and um, my sister did used to warn me about him, but... I didn't see it because sometimes people see things that you don't see. What did she warn you about? 
you know, because men in a world always have more than one girl. And they're my galleys. Okay. But you're not seeing that part. Right. You're seeing the person for who you see them as. Right. But they say love is blind. Mm. And it's really blind because it blocks you from a lot of things. Right. Until something really hit you. But, um, yeah, we met and we were there and everything seems nice. Yeah. So, I got married when my son was about, what, four? Right. Because he, he was my ring bearer. Mm. You know, my little champion. Yeah. Right, so... Still never see nothing. So everything was nice for me then. Yeah. So you're still in the process. Yeah. The process of you plant and you have to wait till it comes to perfection. Mm. So you're in the relationship, you go in. So you have to wait to see things start revealed. And what was revealed? Well, I have my son with him. And afterwards, I found out that he was cheating. Right. Which every man does. Because they, no, they have no perfect relationship. Right. And sometimes... It's not because of the cheating that really caused you as a woman to feel down mm. and depressed. Mm. It's a manner in which it is done. Because mm. you can't stop them. Don't care how good you are. Mm. You will never stop that. But it's a disrespect that comes along with it that causes you to have that barrier. Okay. You understand? And that's the part of it that I never really like. Because mm. even though when I found out about he was cheating, I almost friend the young lady too. But because guess what? We are all going through the same thing. Hmm. No? So if it's not you with somebody else and it's not somebody else and it's a cycle, keep going. Right. But um, during the process of we being together, you know, I try to be a wife because they said to sickness and health to death those part. Yeah. So I play along that line. Right. Try and not play. Do what I'm supposed to right. do. Fulfill your right. role. But here I am at home, mm -hmm. being the mother and the, and the wife, mm -hmm. And sometimes he's not there. Right. So what sense? That make? Yeah, it doesn't make no sense. Where was he? What was he up to? That's it. And you know, you're going to get people going to come and tell you things. Mm -hmm. But it's not everything you're going to hear, you're going to creep on to. You have to right. find out for yourself. Right. So I didn't just quickly grab what I hear. Right. I start to do my own detective work. And I found you, out. What did you say. find out? So I found out that he had another relationship. Yeah. And this was a really ongoing thing. This means he would kind of come in and stalk up nice and say, no, no, not now, go on. And then I start taking pictures. Mm -hmm. So you have to find proof. Mm -hmm. So what is this then? Mm -hmm. But you realize each time that you say things, you're going to create an uh, atmosphere that is very toxic. Right. And it's so, tense and there's and no right, harmony. There's no harmony right. there. So sometimes I try to just push things aside. For the peaceful for life. The peaceful life. For whose peace though? For, for his mine. peace. Because your I, peace? My peace is not there. Exactly. So mostly for him then. Right. So in, in, in you are smiling at the outside, mm -hmm. but inside in, it's not. It's bitter. Mm -hmm. So And then if it. that was not enough of a blow that boy him him a door road oh, hard. <laughs> then here comes another blow. Right. So the another blow that comes along now. Well, we are living together. And I wasn't working. So I need something to do. Right. You know, I want to be my own woman to turn my own key. Yes. Not even my own key, but be responsible. I can say, all right, I need this to be done and that to be done. Instead of to wait and depend on you to do it for me. Right. So there was this hotel program mm -hmm. where you could go away. Yeah. So yeah, here's an opportunity for me. So I went and applied to go away in a Canadian um, program. Yeah. No, 12 of us applied. Out of the 12, I realized, you know, my friend is packing for leave and here is Joan not moving. Mm. So I went in and I asked, you know, how is it that everybody else gets called and I wasn't? Yeah. And I was like, oh, you didn't get the message. I said, which message? So she hands me a letter. She said, you have to go back and go back over your medical. I did the medical three times and this is going to be the fourth time. Why am I keep repeating one thing over and over? Yeah. So the, the, the fourth one, this is it. You're not going to be able to go. Why? No one gave me an explanation why. They just gave me a letter. Yeah. And they sent me to the Ministry of Health. But I only know the Ministry of Health down bottom of King Street. Right, So right. I went there. Right. So when I went there with the letter, no, I have this letter in my hand with my name on it, you know, but I said it wasn't for me to open. Right. So I, not, I didn't open it. I go to the front desk, the receptionist. Mm. I said, I get a letter to take to the Ministry of Health. I do not know if I'm in the right place. So she sent me to somebody else. So when she sent me to the lady, I still tell her the same thing. I do not know why I'm here. Right. So I got this letter. The lady took the letter. She pulled it. 
And she read it. So when she read it, look at me like this. Up and down. You know, the up and down look. Mm -hmm. So I kind of pulled back a little. Mm -hmm. I said, there's something wrong. And she said, you're the wrong place. Just so. Just like that. And then she got a little glue and she sealed it back and she handed it back to me. And she said to me, and you're here safe for coming in a comprehensive clinic. Now, when she told me that, you know, the first thing I thought that I had cancer, I'm going to be frank with you. Right. Because I realized when I used to have intercourse, I used to bleed. Okay. So I figure more or less, oh God, I wonder if I cancer my house. Yeah, it's like a so cervical that, cancer yeah, or something. So, you know, yeah. so she handed it back to me. But what she did, she said, when I go there, I must ask for Nurse Iris. And I went to Comprehensive, asked for Nurse Iris, and I was sent to room 114. Never That's why I never me. forgot that. Never I'll forget. never leave out of my head. So when I knock on the door, Nurse Iris said, enter. The nurse said, enter. I didn't know it was she. I said, this, this Nurse Iris? She said, yes. I said, I was giving this letter to give to you. And she said to me when she took the letter, you know why you're here? I said, no. She said, have a seat. So I sat. So when I sat now and she read, she does take her time and slide over back the paper to me. When I read it coming from the top, you either have the HIV positive slant like this in red. This is what I did. I just looked down. I said, well, anyway, something I have to take out of this world if it's not one thing, it's another. That was the immediate that reaction. That was my re immediate reaction. So you just found out you are HIV, HIV positive, positive and your immediate reaction is that? that something I have to take out of this world. If it's not one thing, it's another. That was my immediate reaction. Yeah. And the nurse got up and she embraced me because she says, Woman, you're strong. My friend, me say, adapt me there, I think. Because she said, everybody else feel on themselves and, you know, yes. with the ear, this They think it's a life sentence, can, don't but they? I think because at that time, reality didn't eat. Right. So there's Watch a difference. Cover. Watch her. You know, reality didn't cover. eat. You get a news. Not a news that you want to hear, but the reality didn't embark on you. Yes. So yes. go through all the process, you know. Taking my nether place, I test her bloods and do everything. Mm -hmm. But when the day finished, that I had to leave the clinic mm. and I was about to enter the door, mm. that is when reality hit me. And what happened? I said, then? Jesus, have mercy. What was just experience? And then I started to cry. Oh. So I walked from comprehensive all the way back to downtown with tears running down my cheek. And I keep crying. And I said, Lord God, why me? Why me? Why me? But within me, I'm not speaking out. Right, and this gentleman saw me and said, Sweetie Pie, what's wrong with you? He said, Something, you know, I'm to your worst enemy. And that's all I keep saying. And I went home, I cried all the way home. I went home, and my mom was there. So when I went home, I was we just added a little part to the side. So it's, it's mm. a little where we had the city. So I sat on it and I cock up my foot like this. <laughs> and the tears just are, Mr. Bala, no, you know, man, because I want to be not to me, I cry. Oh, so same time, my mom said, what happened? I said, Mommy, something in our arm to your worst enemy. That's all I said. This is the same thing I tell the man before. Mm -hmm. And my mom started to sing, One Day at a Time, Sweet Jesus. That's the song she started to sing. And, you know, she keeps singing it. If she cried, I don't know. To be honest with you, if my mom would even have the slight of saying, Boy, me no want her around me, that never sure. She said, Well, my love, one of those things. And she just keeps singing the same time. So I use that my, as my theme song. Mm -hmm. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I ask. And I keep asking him for that. One day, just give me one day. But you ask for the one day, but you're still in a fear. You're yeah. still afraid. Because yeah. when I call my hair, you know, normally you call me here, you have a little loose finance. You know, say, you know I this no, me dead no. The man, it was really going on like that before. Yeah. But when things happen to you, you start to see things differently. Yeah. You don't see it was what the same thing. Yeah. So started to cry there, constantly crying. And I cry morning, noon, and I cry night. It's like you're going through the stages of grief, grief right? right? Yeah. So yeah. here I am. And then again, I remember today so I had to bring my son and I must be my husband. Because everybody now needs to get tested. Right. I was actually just going to ask you, did your husband know his status? I don't know. That is what I'm going to find out now. Uh -huh. So when they say bring the husband and the child, I'm going to tell you the truth. That night I went on my knees and I said, God, I'm asking you to do me a favor. My son doesn't reach nowhere in life yet. And I'm asking you, please do not let him get tested. He's positive. Mm -hmm. The man, man, we don't know nothing much about him. 
because in the type of lifestyle where he was yes, living, yes. but still I wouldn't want it to happen to him. But if so be the case. And God, the next thing may I beg you, I open on me. Because right. remember, I married to this man with kids before. Yeah. So if it's me, forgive me. I ask for my forgiveness that night. Yes. So when I went with my son and him, they took him, they do the tests. You know, you have to go back for results. There's good news and there's bad news. I said, can I get the good news first? Please, mm. please, please, please. And they said, your son is okay. I said, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And would you believe he spent more time with the nurse than me that day? So when he came out, I said, how this happened? Well, I mean, I know, you know. But when we go home, we talk. I said, do we have something for that about? Because me so mad now, we know, man. I kill me, one kill that. Mm -hmm. I tell them the truth. Yeah, man. And I may mean, I say, but then again, no one. We can't kill him because I can't meet too. Right, right. Because it's not like I was a virgin. I right. have kids before. Right. So God take away that from me. But let us deal things rationally. Right. So anyway, when with all of that, we my child was attend start to attend a primary a basic school. Mm -hmm. And when you start to attend the basic school, I know who you know, I will know you. Mm -hmm. So somebody went in and told the mm -hmm. teacher that my son, parents have that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they called me. So when they called mm -hmm. me, they said, apparently your son can no longer attend the school. And I said, why? And she said, because of what we hear. I said, how many kids do you have in your surrounding? And she says, like the friends give me a number of 20. Well, I said, treat everyone as if it was an epidemic. That's right. You know about my one? You know about for them one? Well, let me tell you something. In the move. That's right. You understand where I come from? That's right. So if you have put on gloves, if I gloves, I have to put on, put it on. But he's staying here until it's time for him to graduate and go to primary school. Right. And he did. And even when my son is 18, I still took him back and get a test, you know. Yes. Because I just want to make sure he didn't contract anything from yeah. his mom. Yeah. And... The reason why I think my son really didn't contract anything is because I never used to breastfeed. Really? I didn't breastfeed because the gentleman, the, wife, the husband, didn't give me no money. Mm. So I pay Alaska him feed for me. I tell you the God truth. Mm. And I think that is, see, that is what saved him. So you think you had the I virus I before? I, th I think so because I had a child at uni university hospital. During the time of birth, he, there was something that's wrong with his heart. They have to keep monitoring it. Mm -hmm. Now, when your baby reached a certain stage where you know them for put on weight, he was like this. Mm -hmm. He was very skinny. So what the doctor is saying, probably the little that he had contracted from me, because of the immune system as he grows, he probably he can because in over time it can be mutated. Right. So I give God thanks that didn't happen to him. Mm -hmm. So it happened to him now, a film fault and a meme never gave him. <laughs> Miss Joan. <laughs> you understand where I come from? Yes, Miss Joan. Because they don't talk about man a girl, it's a man not for wear certain things. So if they want to go, they're going to catch it. No, I proper. But here is my question now. With him, well, with your children generally, mm -hmm. knowing the experience of their mom, do you think that they are much more diligent with how they approach their their lifestyle? Yes, well, sometimes even, it's, it's not a matter of fact that, that probably they're not diligent, you know. But we feel for understand. Mm -hmm. It's their parents. Mm. Because they might figure more such for them say a girl and she looks sweet and sexy, she shouldn't have nothing. But remember, say I have some people born with it. Right. Some people have it. Right. I'm still not talking. It's not like me. And but and also some people have it and don't know. And don't even know. So it's a right. vice versa thing. Right, right. So because remember, you know, if I didn't say I'm positive, no one knows. Right. Yeah. Because so nobody my skin would have is a clue. always like this. I've yeah. never have spots, stores, nothing. No, you look well. Right. You look beautiful. And I Actually, can... you look like a real baby, <laughs> Miss Joan. <laughs> you come right, right out and, today. And I know that um, when I just found out, I, did, I know I'd lost a little weight because that's how I never cast. I'm pretty sure you're yeah, a little bit slim, but not skinny, skinny, skinny. When 2010, when I took down sick, I almost died. Really? Because my brain was shut down for one year. For one year, not knowing if I was coming or I was going. What do you mean your brain was shut down, Miss June? The doctor said I have encephalitis of the brain, which I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> but the <laughs> brain stopped bad. working that my body is not functioning. Yeah. So I couldn't do nothing for myself. I couldn't bathe myself. I couldn't even use the bathroom. So I had to be wearing pampers. Really? Yes. At one point in time, they said when I was admitted at the hospital, the hospital, they had to tie down my hand on my feet because I was behaving very, very 
voice but you have us. no recollection of no anything. Recollect. So I asked my son, did you tape me when I was going through all these ordeals? He says, mommy, but all of them can't find the... What do you call it? When you put it on your phone? SIM card? The, you the, can't find the SD it. SD card? Yes, you cannot find it. I wish I could. I wish I could find it because mm. trust me, I'm at the world see this. To see where, what I have been through. How and did I, you recover from that though in 2010? I think I got a miracle. So it's one year now. Yeah. One year? Of can't eat. Sleep, um, bathe myself. So he has to bathe me. My son has to give me my bath. Oh, wow. If I was to eat an orange, somebody has to squeeze that in my mouth. So physically, I couldn't help myself. Right. Oh, I get to know all of this. One day I was tidying up my house. Yeah. So we have barrels. You know, you get barrels. Yeah, yeah. When things so, come. So mm -hmm. I sat down and I was going through the barrel. So going through the barrel now, I saw pampas. So I turned to my sister and I said, this is where did my pampas come from? Our big people pampas. <laughs> she said, not for you. So what? Dear yeah, beloved, I dropped the pampers. Shock. And I leaned on the wall and I started to cry. And I said, oh my God, I was once a man. Twice, twice a, a child. child. And I brought to us when I asked my son, did you tape me? He said, mommy, yes, I did, you know. Because when we come to the hospital, my daughter, going to just do everything in one. When she came to the hospital and see me, she came out. Couldn't she couldn't be able to see her mom in the state that I was in. So I was in a state. Yeah. A state where nobody, because the doctor told my family member they can't prepare to bury me. Really? Yeah. Because uh, there's a ward at KPH where they put you when you're going to die. They're the round to the back section. You're near, you're near to the mark. And that's where I was. Right? But when man said no, God said yes. Oh, this John. Miss you understand Joan. me? So I figure, I, even before we came, I was explaining it to my, uh, my co-worker that other people might see HIV as a downfall, but I see it as a success for me. Miss Joan. Because God know the reason why. Everything that he does is for a purpose. And my purpose is for people to know that regardless of what you are going through in life, you have to have a strong, your belief has to be strong. It can't be weak. Because there's two types of fear, you know. You see that you face everything and rise. Are you fear it and dead? Are you run? The choice is yours. And I told people from there, and when I found out that I was HIV positive, I said, let me tell you this. This thing now kill this girl. It now kill me. So we got to be careful what we speak of ourselves. Yes, Mr. Jones. Because word is power. And I asked God, I want to live my life to the fullest. I want to be live to see 225. I must be the oldest woman in this world. How much you want to reach, Miss Joan? 225. Me no, reach. sir. You are real good up. 225. And I want to age with grace. Yes. Well, you are doing that just you understand? so well. So, yes. I don't let because of, yes, my final to me HIV positive. But mm -hmm. God give me an next chance. Mm -hmm. Remember, I almost died. Yes. So I got another chance. Yes. So I'm going to make the best of that chance that he has given to me. Yes. So I want, when I found out all of those things, I tell myself, I want to be an advocate for people who is HIV positive, who is afraid of coming out of saying that they are, which they don't have to, but live their life to the fullest. They might not come out until say, yes, they are. But at least they cannot take the time and the fear take its time and go away because it's a process. What do you say to the person who still plays into the stigma with oh, HIV Jesus. and them don't want to touch anybody that has HIV or they AIDS? Need they don't want education. To be what do you say to that person? The thing is this, they need to put themselves in that person's position. What yeah. if it was you? Yeah. Remember, I know, and I try to tell people everything. You might live on the hill, you choose. Everything is choice. Yeah. You, you will have the resources because you can live a comfortable lifestyle yes. while some can't. But although you're up here at this level, the person down you can be more happier than you. Yes. You have all the things in the world that make you comfortable. Yes. But the person who doesn't have nothing still have something because they have joy. Aye. You understand where I'm coming yes. from? So people have to know that they have to learn to respect people regardless of their stages in life, whatever it is that they are going through. Because you might not get HIV, you might not develop cancer, but you can meet in an accident and something put you where you have to take an X back in life, mm -hmm. where you used to do everything for yourself and because of the accident you can't anymore. Yes. So people have to be doing it for you. Yes. 
the day, so they're going to discriminate against you or they're going to stigmatize you. Right. So each, each situation differs. Yes. We all have different challenges, have different courses in life where we take. Yes. You understand? But some of us, we just live our life thinking more. You don't live a type of lifestyle in that cause if it happen. Come on, we never live nothing. Mm -hmm. We don't have fun. Mm -hmm. A fun put to which part day. Mm -hmm. We never see him and say, boy, he has something. No kind of show. Right. Right? I remember the first time I went to the Jamaica Observer. That's the first time I came out public. In the Jamaica Observer, where I went to, it was a discrimination in the work environment. Right. And when I was invited there, I attended with Miss Rosie Stone, which is Carl Stone's wife. Mm -hmm. There was a round table. Right. And this lady was saying that people who have HIV must put in a barrel and roll down an ear. What? So I stand up because I am HIV. No, you see my tattoo? Yeah, me I look funny. Me 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 look funny. You're good up, Rose. So, <laughs> I had on a blouse where this was showing. I had on a little longer lashes, and my hair was cut up in one with the tarpies behind. On a try, take in Miss Joan lashes. <laughs> Yes, Miss so Joan. I turned to her and I said, Do I look like somebody who needs to put down a hill and throw down a barrel? In a barrel down a hill? Same way. She said, For you not stay. So I said, That is it. Because HIV doesn't have a face. Same way. It doesn't have a face. Same way. You can have spots and you must not HIV positive. That's right. So why are you feet are because people have sores and spots or because they lose weight? They have HIV. We need to stop doing these things. Even those in the health sector, they need to stop it too. Yes. Because that is why a lot of people are not coming into care. That's right. That's at right. how they deal with individuals. Yes. Some people, because of what happened to them, they stop putting themselves together. Yes. They stop because they figure out more or less the world is not theirs anymore. Yes. So when they come in, what does it take for you to take the individual one side and give them some form of encouragement? Yes. That they can realize that there's hope. And it's not a death sentence. No. It's not so that a death sentence. That is why I told them that HIV means human, uh, in, human immune deficiency virus. virus. Mm -hmm. But HIV for me is hope inspired vision because I have a lot of hope. That is hope my HIV vision. vision. That's my HIV. People have hope. They want to have a home and a car. They want to drive. They want to live comfortable. They want to be happy. Old, only hoping that someone would give them that form of encouragement as they can. And the more you give them, they get inspired by what you do or what you say. And the vision is to accomplish it in the long run. They do. They're not dead. When they're dead, not that she way. When they're dead, not call it doppy. So why they feel they must treat them different? And you know, who is no doppy around oh, here? Oh, Jesus have mercy. Miss Joan. Yeah. Beautifully shared. Yeah. Beautifully shared. And I am properly inspired. Glad you are. Thank you so much. You're I welcome. wish you all the best on your mission. Because you have mission, eh? Yeah. There is, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing real, living, raw purpose, Miss Joan. You are here with purpose. You have a calling on your life. And I am. it is my honor to have a front row seat to watch you live out that mission and, and thank vision. Thank you so much for this opportunity as well. Because I always see you on television, but never get to meet him. But finally, it does not never happen before the time. Not before the time. And no, you don't just <laughs> meet me, no, Miss Joan. You can not call me, girl. Miss <laughs> You understand? You understand? Yeah. It Say is no? my pleasure to have spent time in your company. And the pleasure is mine to be in yours as well. It's my pleasure as well. And I hope we have more company like this. Different settings. What do you mean? Can hope love, inspire fire, vision. vision. Yeah. Hope inspire vision. I like your bad Mr. <laughs> <laughs>